Okay, now, quick explanation here, because I hear it all the time from people that question this burst type of training, or high intensity interval training, as maybe not, not the best way to train. Because for so long now, we've been indoctrinated that the best way to train is to go, this what we, typical aerobics activity, moderate or low to moderate intensity, continuous activity, and you need to do that for your heart health and for losing weight. Or at least that's what people say. The question is, is that the case? New research is showing that's not the case. But I want you to just think of this example. The sporting world provides us many great athletes for us to look at and, and have as a goal to attain. If in this end of the spectrum I have such sort of sporting events as hammer throwing, uh, sprinting, things that are a very short period of time, and then we come all the way over this side of the spectrum where we have marathon runners, endurance athletes that are doing things that last a long period of time. Now I want you to start thinking of all the sort of different sports that you watch on TV, okay? So we've got sprinters and then other things. We've got baseball, we've got soccer, we've got rugby, we've got golf, we've got tennis. You keep naming the sports, you'll start to realize that the vast majority of sports have what we call an interval base to it. That is, a baseball player who's out in the outfield is sprinting to make a catch, and then he makes the catch or doesn't, throws it back in, the activity's over, but he may have had 30 seconds worth of very intense activity, and then he stopped, okay? Similarly, a soccer player may have a very fast burst of activity, sprint to the ball, kick the ball, ball's gone, in his area of the field, he now takes a break. And you start to examine sports, the vast majority of sports are that way, interval-based. You go hard, and then you recover. So essentially, that's the best way for you to train, and research supports that, okay? And I simply say to a lot of people, who would you rather look like, a sprinter or a marathon runner? And I know most people are trying to get the body of a sprinter. Yes, marathon runners are elite, but they don't have the tone of the muscle, and also they're not as healthy. The immune system of a sprinter is far better than the immune system of an endurance athlete. That's been shown in the research, okay? And as I said, if you go to the website, you can read more about that. So realize that burst training, look at a sprinter, they're strong. We said burst training improves strength. They don't have a lot of fat on them, okay? You've never seen a fat sprinter, so it gets the fat ones. They've got great endurance. They might not win a marathon, but do you need to win a marathon? Okay, for your average health person, they don't need to do that. And they've got power, they've got good balance. So the way to train is burst training. Go to the website if you want to find out more information about why. So let's examine why there's such a difference in the training volume of, say, a sprinter and an endurance athlete. What one needs to realize is as the intensity increases in activity, it's not a linear increase, it's an exponential increase. We're very efficient as human beings at walking. As we start to run, we become less efficient and the calories required go up exponentially. Now the break point, that exponential increase, starts to occur at a fast run. So in other words, there's not many more calories needed to walk than just standing and then jogging versus walking and slow run versus jogging. It is going up. And so that will work, but you need to do a lot of it for a long period of time. Whereas when we get this exponential increase in calories, one can easily understand then why a lot less time is needed to burn the same number of calories as you would if you were doing continuous moderate intense activity.